from here. Greetings, 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 uh, Brightside audience. Uh, We're so happy to have you with us today. And uh, we have an es the esteemed pleasure of introducing you to one George Pathway. And uh, George is an author. He's really the, written a tremendous book regarding code switching, which uh, Diana, uh, Prada, uh, primarily affects our community uh, in an interesting way. And uh, I I'm so happy to have him. Uh, he's an academic uh, professor, and uh, I think you'll be delighted by his messaging and also pleased with uh, what we talk about today. You know, we're, we we go around the world, but uh, George is right here, and uh, I'm happy to have him with us. George, George, just say hi to our audience, please. Hey, how's it going? Uh-huh. Okay, very good, very good. George, your book, uh, I think, has the tremendous capacity for reaching uh, the academics, students, minorities, and a population of people who might be caught or found pressured. And, uh, and and because, you know, sometimes you're in a conversation and you just can't prevent, begin to understand the direction of the conversations. And out there are conversations with us, conversations about us, and conversations that uh, can uh, offer some unique predicaments. And so, Georgia, this is a very timely book. Uh, I'm excited about your offer. And uh, we want to spend some time today discussing the book. Uh, also, the challenges that the book may re be reviewed and how the book can and will empower, uh, empower larger segments of our community. I want to thank you for writing it and share share with us. And what I like to do is get our audiences, you know, pushed to the fence a little bit. Um, what was the challenge that made you decide to write such a book? Yeah. Uh, so this whole thing of code switching, the definition is the practice of one adjusting their style of speech, appearance, behavior, or expression to a particular context or situation. Code switching is something that we all do naturally as human beings, how we navigate informal and formal settings. We're going to be code switching. However, when it comes for our people of color, code switching can seem like a burden, something that they have to do to advance within their career, to avoid you know, racism, discrimination, what have you. And so my whole angle of this text is to create something where um, we can both educate the majority white population of what's going on with code switching and how to foster really safe and welcoming spaces where people can really show up as their true authentic selves. Um, but this whole inspiration started um, back in 2015 uh, when I was an undergrad at the University of Wisconsin Whitewater. Uh, there I was uh, selected to be a part of the Ronald E. McNair Scholars Program where you do undergraduate research. Um, there I decided to do a research on code switching. Why? Because I noticed myself code switching when I matriculated from an inner city high school to a particular uh, predominantly white college. I, it was a culture shock for me. The dynamics were different. And so I noticed myself code switching when I got around like faculty, staff, and any other uh, important personnel on campus. And so I decided to do a research to see how my fellow black college students were navigating this predominantly white space what challenges were they having with code switching? What successes were they having? And all goes to congregate everyone in one setting to share their lived experience. And so I ended up expanding that research paper into a book in 2015, in 2020. And now what I do is I'm a diversity, equity, and inclusion speaker. I travel across the nation to uh, speak to universities on this concept of code switching to increase their um, their attraction, their retention, and their graduation rates of students of color. So while doing this research, I found that code switching has some negative impacts, specifically on our people of color. So the reason why pe people of color tend to code switch is because they want to mitigate and avoid like racism. They want to mitigate and avoid stereotypes, discrimination, you name it. However, they're code switching to avoid that they've come to find that code switching, when they code switching, they still experience racism. They're still experiencing discrimination. And now they're at the point, it's like, what the heck? What do I do now? This thing isn't working to, you know, to avoid that. So, and this is where we come in place to share with institutions like, hey, your 
college, your students of color are experiencing higher level of student burnout because of code switching. And I share with them symptoms of that. So the symptoms are low student engagement, low academic performance. Another symptom is increased mental health issues. It, this looks like in, in case of anxiety, depression, which leads to the fourth uh, symptom, which is substance abuse. And then the last uh, symptoms is students end up leaving that institution and continue or finishing their programs at another school. So two things that happens when students leave and all those symptoms, one is that it, higher ed institutions do not see a return on their investment, right? We know it takes so much money to uh, pay for recruitment. It just attracts students. And when, when students leave, higher ed people don't see their uh, investments. And also students lose money um, for whatever time spent at that college, whether through financial aid or come out of pocket, not just money, they you know, waste out on their time, their energy. And it's really sad when you think about it that students are leaving or having low academic performance or low engagement to the fact that they don't feel be belonging at that school, they don't feel safe, they don't feel welcome, they don't feel seen, right? And so our job is to share with the whole world and institutions, like this is what is happening. And we share best practices on how we can support and encourage our students of color to show up as their true authentic selves, how to support them in the classroom, how to support who they really are, embrace it, right? And cultivate that and not trying to have them change the way they talk, change the way they dress, strain their hairs just for advancement. That should be a given. And so our whole job in a nutshell, right, is to help higher ed institutions save money and to increase student engagement, increase student retention, and increase those graduation rates of our students of color. Mm. Sounds like a very efficient initiative. I mean, it's all to uh, restore and uh, encourage and uh, money that's being spent, you know, give a wiser perspective on that direction. Uh, this is incredible, George. It's really incredible now. Of course, uh, the objective and the, the necessity is reaching everybody, reaching everybody. And also when it comes to code switching, I mean, you know, uh, it could be used to reach a better and greater plateau for our community. I mean, you know, because, I mean, from the standpoint of switching codes and uh, you, you, our ability to switch gives us greater power, gives us greater strength. I mean, because when something, when an item or an article is mentioned, you know, people have perspectives about what will be said in response. But at the end of the day, if they're said out of racism or said to, to offer a negative effect, then, you know, we can't, I mean, you know, code switching allows us to stand up and be heard in a very factual and uh, complete, dominant way, you know, because it doesn't do anybody any good to walk through the platform of deceit, you know, or walk under the platform of deceit. If it's not true, then and it's not accurate, then it's deceit. You know, so so at the end of the day, getting the, the truth out, facts out, and reaching uh, the, the the larger audience when it comes to these matters. Good job, good job, way to go. Uh, so what do we have to do here, um, standpoint-wise? Uh, you, you know, you've done the research and evaluated what's in our way. What's your response to that? Yeah. Um, so what's in our way of, you know, advancing this goal of, again, increasing retention, attraction and graduation rates are a handful of things. Uh, so the first thing is that institutions really need to enhance or redefine their diversity, equity and inclusion initiatives. Um, DEI goes more beyond just the numbers. Right. Um, mm -hmm. I think it's important that we have equitable systems in place, um, it's important for us to really assess uh, students' experiences. I think if I could start, that's where we we'll start. First, start assessing students' experiences, rather it's through surveys, rather it's through focus groups, interviews, what have you. It's important for higher institutions to see 
how are their students experiencing campus life? Is it good? Is it bad? Is it okay? Is it horrible? And then they get to assess what can be done to enhance their experiences. It's also important within the book, um, in the book, I share best practices of how students can get the most out of their college experiences. So through um, locating resources on campus that are uh, best conducive to their identity. So there's many uh, resources on campus like the multicultural resource centers, there's writing centers, there's mentor labs and things of that sort. So the importance of leveraging those resources. The second one is really being involved on campus. Sometimes students and I've been there as a college student myself where, you know, you just go to class and after class, you back to your safe, your safe place, whether your safe place is, you know, back in the dorms, whether your, your uh, space safe is um, with other you know, people of color, stuff like that. But it's important for us to get out our comfort zones, right, to be engaged on campus, because studies show when students take on leadership positions on campus, when they start getting more involved, Right, that increases their overall sense of belonging at the institution. It increases their grades, and all that leads to increase in their graduation rates as well. Okay. Now, I, know, I know we're running, we're gonna run out of time here, but I do want to make sure that I paid attention to a name that you tossed out that uh, I don't think we could ever forget. Uh, it was. Uh, astronaut Ronald E. McNair. Mm -hmm. What a tremendous guy, an amazing mind, a wonderful purpose-driven personality. And I have to say this, and I'm being very careful, you know, he did graduate from my alma mater, <laughs> North Carolina a and State University. What I mean, I mean, his legacy and his reputation and what uh, what paths he had to come through and how he code switched. And it, but his code switching was effective and he was able to get to NASA and uh, he served our country well that way. So I give you kudos for your selection and thanks you know, for participating and thanks for your involvement and the work you do. Uh, we can spend a little more time evaluating what that might come to or how we can, you know, chime our efforts and industry issues together and what it could mean for future points of view. So our audience is pleased to have you as a part of the community. Uh, do your job, do your job, you know, and we will do all that we can to help you do your job. Mr. You know, George Passway, uh, thanks for being with us. Uh -huh. so, thanks for having me. Very good, very good. And so with that being said, we're going to move to a uh, 